everything. My name is Mary Crow, Education Specialist at Care Dimensions. Today, we are so pleased to have Diane Stringer, CEO Emerita, on the show. Uh, we were so excited about having her on this show today. And uh, again, so we're going to talk about Care Dimensions and, and kind of a historical perspective from Care Dimensions and also hospice. Diane, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mary. It's really nice to be here. Oh, we're so thrilled to have you here. So tell us about yourself. Sure. I, just two weeks ago, retired from the role I'd had for 28 years as the President and CEO of Care Dimensions. And it's been an amazing journey. And to be sitting here with you, Mary, um, at this point, at this juncture, is really a privilege. But I started this work in 1989. And the organization had three part-time employees. And to see where it has come in almost uh, less than 30 years is truly remarkable and heartwarming. I mean, I don't need to tell you, but we have um, over 500 employees. We care for thousands of patients throughout the North Shore and beyond, um, supporting them and their families during the challenge of a terminal illness mm -hmm. and, um, and continuing to support loved ones and families um, with grief counseling and support. Uh, and to see not just the growth of care dimensions, but the growth and acceptance of hospice care and what good end-of-life care means uh, has really been incredible. I think about um, how different it is now than it was back then. When I started um, this job, people I knew said, well, what is hospice anyway? Um, and they didn't know how to pronounce it, and now it's hard to find someone who hasn't had some experience with hospice, with the care, whether it was for the care for a, a parent or a loved one, or you know, knew someone in their circle of friends who had benefited from hospice care. And also, hospice is so much better integrated into the healthcare continuum now. Um, in the early days, uh, you know, we had this reputation that oh, those are the people who you know we were thought of as like wearing Birkenstocks and holding right. hands yes. around the bed of a yeah. you know a, a person who was dying and um, and singing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and um, we always did a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, but really now um, we're we're very much a part of the fabric of the healthcare system, yeah. and there is truly a recognition and studies have been done that demonstrate that, that hospice is the care that people want at the end of life. Um, you know, most people, um, if they have a choice um, and uh, have the unfortunate situation of, of having a terminal illness, yeah. don't want to be in the hospital. They don't want to be in the intensive mm -hmm. care unit. Um, they would much rather be um, at home or in a setting that is as close to home as possible um, and surrounded by the people and the things that are important to them. Um, they want to have um, their symptoms managed, their dignity honored, um, and that's what hospice does. So it Absolutely. has been an enormous privilege for me to do this work for so long. Uh, I'll tell you, it's it's just really, it, and I, I've referred to you as this before, a visionary, uh, and I truly mean that, and I don't mean to embarrass you by that, because I know that you're humble, uh, but again, you really are, because again, it didn't come easy, Diane, and again, I think, you know, again, when, when people see the growth that you're discussing, it, it, it didn't come easy, so talk about some of those hurdles that you had to overcome. Well, I think it's interesting. People, you know, I, I say to someone, just a, a social acquaintance, something about, oh, you know, hospice, we've grown and it's very busy. And they say, oh, that's too bad. Yeah. And I say, well, my response is, well, it means we're caring for more people who need us. Right. And um, it's not that more people are dying. You know, death is that one inevitability that, Correct. you know, from the moment we, we're born, um, it, it is a certainty. It's, you know, when and how is not, but the fact that, um, you know, we will all um, come to the end of our lives. And to the extent that we have been able to help so many people have um, an end of life experience and not just the individual, but their family, that is the best that it can be. So in terms of hurdles, I, oh, I'd say there have been a fair, a fair few along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly, um, Hospice, well, hospice wasn't even um, a reimbursable uh, 
program under health insurance up until 1985. That's when the Medicare program um, began to um, introduce a benefit for hospice mm -hmm. care. And I always say, I think it's pretty remarkable, Medicare has been around since the 1965, I think. Yep. And in those more than 50 years that we've had the Medicare program, there's only two benefits that have been added. Um, hospice in the mid-1980s and then the Part D prescription drug benefit that was about, whatever, 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah. So Congress, in its wisdom, recognized that, you know, we need better end-of-life care in this yeah. country. And dying isn't just a medical event that should happen behind closed doors in a hospital. Um, it's a human event. It's an event in the life of a family. So the fact so, that there is reimbursement, that insurance companies actually will, will pay for the service, um, what they pay is um, sometimes we find it a challenge to manage within that because we at Care Dimensions always have prided ourselves on doing whatever it takes to support a patient and family. And often that means some of the things that we provide aren't really covered by insurance because insurers or Medicare in their wisdom don't see medical necessity in things like we were just talking about complementary therapies. Right, right. That we offer massage therapy, Reiki, music therapy, um, pet therapy. All of those programs have a cost associated with them, but they're not reimbursable. Right. Um, fortunately for Care Dimensions, we are um, the recipients of very generous support from the community, mm -hmm. and that is what makes those additional services possible. Some uh, people aren't aware, though, that with those care, like the complementary therapies, they're distinguishing features that, again, I think that there's still the misconception out there that all hospices are alike. They're so different. Yes. Yes. I mean, I've, I've had the experience, and you probably have, too. Someone will say to me, oh, you work for hospice. Oh, we had you people from my mother in Florida. And I say, right. well, you had a hospice for your mother, yeah. but there are something like three or 4,000 hospices yeah. in the United States and mm -hmm. 75 or more in Massachusetts. Right. I've lost count. Yeah. But um, while all hospices have to adhere to certain minimum requirements mm -hmm. um, in order to receive reimbursement from the federal government through the Medicare program, it's a minimum set of requirements. So yeah. at Care Dimensions, certainly things like our complementary therapies um, program is just one way um, we exceed, far exceed those requirements yeah. and um, really distinguish ourselves in the um, depth and breadth of our services. Yeah. And that not-for-profit status, too, because, again, there's some d distinctions there for people because, again, some people think that, again, like they're all alike in those ways, too. Right. So right. there are some other distinguishing features. Yes. Yes, I often would say to new employees, um, there are two things about care dimensions that I think are important for employees and for other people to know as yeah. well. Uh, we are a not-for-profit organization mm -hmm. and the good news is there we don't have owners or shareholders who we mm -hmm. have to satisfy. Um, we have to be good stewards of our financial resources of yeah. course in order to stay in business um, but we can we are and we are very good stewards of those resources and we can um, raise money right. and uh, philanthropic support from the community goes to things like helping us to build the Kaplan Family Hospice House on Liberty Street. Um, as you know, we're now building a second inpatient hospice care center in Waltham. And I don't think people are, I know that, and I'm thrilled about this, and I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. Okay. So maybe okay. you could talk a little bit more sure. about that as well. So Care Dimensions, Mary knows well, was Hospice of the North Shore um, from 1978 until 2011. Um, it changed in 2011 when um, Hospice of the North Shore was approached by the Partners Healthcare System. And we were asked by um, the Partners System to take over running Partners Hospice. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows Partners Healthcare because they are um, a huge comprehensive network of um, you know, tertiary hospitals, community hospitals, rehab centers, you know, their focus is on research and, and um, teaching and care, um, and they have a vast array of services. They had a hospice program, but they said, you know, hospice is an important service, and it's not one that we have been able to um, give the focus and attention that it deserves, and we know the reputation of, care, of hospice of the North Shore because um, patients from Partners Hospitals, notably North Shore Medical Center as well as Mass General Hospital, mm -hmm. Brigham Women's Hospital, were you know, referred for their hospice care to Hospice of the North Shore and we had a very strong collaboration and um, we had 
frankly, we were very well respected for the care we provide um, by the physicians and others within the partner's health care system. Mm -hmm. So they asked us to take over their hospice. And since um, partners is usually more known for being um, expanding their network and acquiring other um, providers and so forth. It's not often that they are approaching a community provider like Hospice of the North Shore to say, we would like you to take over yeah. this program for us. So we did that. Um, it meant that this organization that had traditionally served the North Shore mm -hmm. um, expanded our service area because Partners Hospice was um, concentrated um, in serving patients in Boston in the western suburbs. Mm -hmm. So that meant in 2011 we opened an office in Wellesley and we were um, caring for patients in almost 90 communities in eastern Massachusetts. So that didn't, Hospice of the North Shore didn't quite fit if you were um, taking care of somebody who lived in Dorchester yep. or Newton. Mm -hmm. So we um, eventually changed our name to Care Dimensions. And that was in itself a journey because um, when we talked about uh, a new name, I thought that was a pretty simple exercise of, yeah. you know, find a new name and go change the letterhead and the yeah. signs and <laughs> off you go. But I came to appreciate with um, lots of education from our, our board and, and experts that it's really more than that. It's, an, it's more than a name. It is a brand. It is how your customers um, perceive you. What is the organization known for? What distinguishes you? And so we set out to find that out and we asked our customers, we asked our employees, mm -hmm. our volunteers, patients and families we cared for, um, physicians in the community, referral sources, donors, you know, what is it about this organization that's unique and what are the things, the attributes that you associate with it? And what people said was, it sort of boiled down to two key attributes um, that Hospice of the North Shore was known for. Um, compassion and expertise, yeah. and really deep expertise in end-of-life care. That is what we do, that is our specialty, yeah. um, and we deliver that care with deep compassion. And you really need them both. Um, those two attributes are inextricably linked. And also we heard, well, Hospice of the North Shore, but you do more than hospice care. Right. Um, you provide grief support. Mm -hmm. You provide palliative care support for some patients who, people who might you know, they're, they're not quite ready for hospice. They perhaps have a chronic, long, longer-term illness, but it isn't quite to the terminal phase yet, mm -hmm. but they need some of the support that hospice provides. For example, they need help with uh, symptom management, yeah. with pain control, mm -hmm. with just having conversations about what to expect as their illness progresses, what are their wishes and hopes and goals. That's what palliative care does, and, and we were providing that. Um, we do, th Mary, thanks to you and others, a lot of education of the professional community and the community at large about good care at the end of life. So all of those things, while hospice is still central, is the core of what we do, it's not the only thing we do. So we said, well, there are dimensions of the programs and the services we offer, and then there are these two critical dimensions to how we provide the care. And so that was the genesis of um, Care Dimensions as our new name three years ago. And um, here we are. So yes, yeah. we have the Kaplan Family Hospice House, um, our 20-bed inpatient hospice care facility in Danvers on Liberty Street that I'm enormously proud of. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that Partners Healthcare said to us back in 2011 is, the Kaplan House is such an exceptional facility, but there's nothing like it closer to the city. Right. Um, we need something like that um, closer to Boston or in, in the suburbs you know, west of Boston. Mm -hmm. So um, that was our charge. They agreed to provide us some financial um, help to make mm -hmm. that possible. And um, we found a, a property um, on Winter Street in Waltham, actually on the Waltham Lincoln Line. And we um, went through a process of getting all the necessary approvals uh, and broke ground on an 18, a new 18-bed facility, which will be very, very similar mm -hmm. to the Kaplan Family Hospice House, um, which will open later this year. So which is very exciting. I mean, this and again, this is really amazing in a lot of ways because and and again I just want to point out another distinction because um, again not all hospices have 
a house, nevertheless, too. Uh, right. So again, this is this is very important for people in terms of again when they're looking at uh, this type of care yes. to be able to um, you know really do their homework right. in terms of those right. distinctions. Because primarily we care, you know, as you know, we care for patients in their homes in the community right, right. or whatever home might be. Home is, you know, an assisted living community, um, a nursing home, a homeless shelter. You know yeah, we care. Absolutely. We have cared for um, several homeless patients. Yes. Um, a group home for the developmentally disabled. Definitely. You know, home means is many takes many different shapes and forms. But there are situations, and we know this only too well, where um, care at home may not be um, viable all the, all the right. way through the course of the illness. Yeah. Um, the, it, it may get to a point where it is just too stressful and demanding for the family, even with the maximum help that Hospice uh, Care Dimensions provides in the home. And so the Kaplan Family Hospice House has been such a, I don't know how we did it, frankly, yeah, before we had the Kaplan right. House, because so many people have benefited from the care there. Um, and we provide respite care, so yeah. sometimes um, a patient is receiving hospice services at home and the family member who's kind of it was the primary caregiver really just needs a break or they they have plans to attend a wedding out of state and they, uh, the Kaplan House is a place where that patient can go for a few days to give caregivers a break and then go home again right. or go to have our physicians and nurses around the clock really provide intensive um, symptom management to get things under control and um, then uh, very often the patient will go home again. Right. So yeah. it's been a tremendous Such a wonderful resource. option. Yeah. You know, and, and I think one of the nice things is, you know, we, I, I still think, again, there's some, we have to do education. You know, I, I think it's imperative in terms of, like you mentioned, good quality, end of life care. You know, because we do have this impression, we medicalize, you know, yes. and, and how isolating is that? when we do kind of medicalize this, the, the, the dying Egg. process. Yes. And, and, and it's so really kind of, when we even refer to people as the dying, we kind of set them aside. You were talking about, we're all going to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's so important that people feel like this stage of life is what it really is, is yes. really embraced and that it's done well. And again, one of the things that I just really honor so much about hospice and you know, you know, because we've seen it done well, what a gift that is yeah. for a family to be able to give their loved one and vice versa. Because it, I've seen it ease the grieving process when a family says, wow, you know, I honored my, my family member's wishes, um, you know, and tenderly cared for them with um, the help of hospice. So it's really, you know, as we, we know, it's just, incredibly important and sacred work. Yeah, it really is. It really is. You know, what do you, uh, tell us what your thoughts are in terms of what does the future hold in terms of hospice care? Well, what does the future hold for health care well, in a good this question too. Uh, yeah. very interesting mm -hmm. times that we live in? Yeah. Um, there are a lot of unknowns, what's happening with the Affordable Care Act and, and um, health insurance and so forth. And a lot of, you know, what we see all around us in eastern Massachusetts are systems becoming larger and more integrated and not, um, frankly, not a lot of independent community-based Healthcare provider organizations, whether that's a community hospital or a local visiting nurse association, there aren't a lot of community-based organizations left. Right. Um, I'm really very proud of the fact that Care Dimensions is still right. independent and community-based because that means we get to listen to the community. Yeah. Um, we can stay f focused with laser-like intensity on this mission of providing the best possible end-of-life care. We work with all of the healthcare systems in Eastern Massachusetts, and we um, really, they are key customers of ours. We, um, we work very hard to ensure that we un understand what their needs are for their patients. And, you know, the different providers, different physicians have different preferences, and, you know, we work with them. Um, so, ultimately, what the future holds for healthcare and for hospice care. Whether hospice will, you know, in five or ten years be folded in under a very comprehensive health system, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so happy that we have this treasure in the community called right. Care Dimensions. Yes, um, and it, but the thing that I take 
great comfort and confidence in is that our board is very wise, very strategic. We have members on our board of directors who work with the health systems, mm -hmm. work with health insurers, understand the you know the sort of payer and political landscape, mm -hmm. and we'll all, you know we're always trying to look, you know look out there a little bit, um, not get too far ahead of ourselves, but look you know keep an eye on what's happening in the larger environment and what the future might hold, so that we can make. Um, the board can make the best possible yeah. decisions, always keeping patients and families at the center of yeah. that decision making. And you certainly see that. I mean, Care Dimensions has always remained true to its mission in that regard. You know, I, I've been here for over 11 years and I see that every day, day in and day out, and it's something to be proud of. You know, certainly end of life care, is, it's, it's always going to be needed. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, again, so when we're looking to the future, I think people can, you know, kind of hold that in terms of confidence level that you yes. know it's strong and we will always be here and to provide this quality yes. care yes so it just like you say sometimes in terms of what it exactly looks like i, I mean that there can be uh, some adjustments there but certainly again good quality end-of-life care will always be yes. necessary yes and the precepts and the you know of what what is good end-of-life care will will be there you're absolutely right and you know we see continued growth not just for care dimensions but across the country when you know you look at data from the from the Medicare program more and more um, Medicare beneficiaries um, are having hospice care at the end of life so there you know there's as we said continues to be greater awareness greater acceptance yeah. um, and greater as I said integration with um, the healthcare continuum what are some of the ways do you think, because even now, and again, I, I see just huge strides in terms of helping to, um, you know, demystify or, or to help with these, uh, you know, the myths and misconceptions about the H word, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Because that's mm -hmm. what sometimes people even shy away from hospice, which is a wonderful word, actually. It's not something to be afraid of. But talk about that a little bit, if you will, you know, in terms of what are some of the things we can do to c continue to help people in terms of, um, better educating and helping them to understand that this is a wonderful service that they're entitled to. I think you know. I know we have our our you know nurses have ex and social workers have experiences on a regular basis of you know a family or a patient being referred for hospice services, let's say by their physician, and you know we, we contact the family and they say, oh, it's so wonderful to know that an organization like Care Dimensions is out there, but we're not ready, we don't need you yet. And, right. and we know we know that they do, um, yeah. and it's a hot, sometimes it's a hard road um, for people to travel, especially if they've been struggling and with a you know a very serious illness for you know sometimes a number of years yeah. and sort of when is it time for hospice and I think one of the unfortunate things is with people think oh hospice it's about giving up it's when we're ready to throw in the towel when there's nothing else that can be done and sometimes I will say even some physicians sadly see hospice as a sign of that they've failed right. um, and I always say to people it's not about giving up it's you know, there is hope in hospice. It's reframing hope. It's not hope for a cure. It's hope for quality time. It's hope for um, being with family. Um, it's hope for, you know, having the time to do the things Absolutely. that you want to do to have, to have closure, um, you know, to make sure that you've told your family the things you want to tell them and that you've heard those things. And so that's what hospice does. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, um, I just marvel at the things that our staff and volunteers do um, with patients to help them, you know, life review. And, yes, absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is, and Mary, because your specialty is long-term care, you know how we see, we begin to take care of a patient, sometimes not not infrequently with hospice support, patient's condition actually improves. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Because they're getting more right. help and more support and more yeah. attention. And um, and so there actually have been studies done with patients with lung cancer that have demonstrated with earlier hospice intervention and earlier hospice involvement, life, expend life expectancy has increased. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, again, you know, you were talking about about dying being being viewed as a failure, 
Um, and again, it's, you know, again, it's, it's really an inevitable part of life. And mm -hmm. again, when we, but dying poorly is certainly a failure. Yes. And I think that that's where hospice comes in and again, can change that. Yeah. And, and for people to kind of help, I think one of our roles is to help people to understand hospice is not just for the final hours or days, right. that really in order to be able to, to tend to a person's spirit, mind, and body, that having them on early and really being able to tend to all of those needs, we can do the best work there. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And being able to really, you know, get to know a patient and family and bring all of the resources um, that we have to bear and the, you know the full interdisciplinary team yeah. to support them um, we do I mean I've we've seen our staff do remarkable work with in a very short period of time and I say it's almost like hospice ER you know crisis care right. um, and they do amazing things but when there's when there is more time it, it is just um, it's just richer and right, um, I think everyone can kind of relax into it and um, really have again that time um, and I, you know, I always love when I, I've heard this many times where, you know, people who utilized hospice services said, you know, it, we, we were not treated as a patient, we were treated as a person. Mm -hmm. And again, it, I think it's so wonderful when it's uh, really person-centered care, patient-centered care, and it's not, it's not uh, a cookie-cutter approach. Yeah. This is very individualized. Or the families that we hear from after, um, after death who said, oh, I wish we'd gotten hospice in sooner. Yeah. Yeah, it, it happens so yeah. much, doesn't it? It does. I get, I think, like, like you say, you know, National Healthcare Decision Day happened not so long right. ago, right? And what was the theme? It's you know, it, it's always too early and or too soon before it's too late. That's right. And I just feel it's the same way with hospice yeah. care in this way, and you know that people often, like you said, they don't think it's time. But um, I think that's again, we have to get out there to help them to understand yeah. that this is just not for those final moments. Yes. So. So, I, you know, we just have a short time left, just, just another minute, but just anything else you want to add before we wrap up today? Well, we have a new CEO for Care Dimensions. Yeah. So I want to sure, be sure to yes. mention that because sure. Pat, uh, Patricia Ahern just started uh, two weeks ago, and um, it's been a pleasure to welcome her to the organization. I am um, fading out and <laughs> just helping um, Pat get um, sort of acclimated because she's new to the area, but she comes with deep experience in hospice care. She um, ran a hospice in Chicago and one in Buffalo. She's a nurse, as I am, um, with an MBA. So she's got the you know, wonderful combination of um, you know, the clinical skills and the business acumen. So we're delighted that she's joined us. Right. And I feel really very good about passing the baton to Pat. Which I know it, it must be very important to you because again, you've certainly devoted your life's work and, and your heart and soul to this. Uh, so again, I'm sure it would matter to you who you did hand that baton off yeah. to. Yes, it did. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough, Diane. You've certainly, you know, touched all of our lives, and you will remain in them. And again, it's just been a true honor to, ha you know, have the opportunity to work with you over these numbers of years. And I just can't thank you enough for what you've done, uh, not just for Care Dimensions, but for hospice in general and also the healthcare system. It's been amazing. Thank you very much, Mary. It's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much for being here today with us. I have worked in a lot of different settings and I, I have never seen the care, love and support that I've experienced um, with Care Dimensions. Because it's about the patient's quality of life. We provide care during one of the most challenging times in a family's life. One of the things that we really focus on is how people want to live their life. We have transformed the way our community experiences end of life care. It is more than hospice, it is care for advanced illness. At Care Dimensions, we'll take care of your family like you're a part of ours.